real commitment and determination uh, from all here uh, to try and make respect work as well as possible. Um, the understanding that the respect process is there to improve people's care um, and to empower people so that they have more choice and control over decisions that are made about them when they don't have capacity uh, to make those decisions themselves. Um, it, there's a sense here of a group of people across the country who are really committed to this agenda uh, uh, and to coming together to make that work. I think uh, the, the, the most important thing that I've learned um, is just the extent to which respect is now being tested uh, uh, and tried um, in different parts of the country. Uh, I think one of the really interesting things was the way that we heard that in Surrey uh, and Sussex, uh, that it's not being seen as a standalone tool, but it's being embedded into a systemic improvement program, in that case, for end of life care, although. Uh, I think there's a recognition actually that respect should not be seen uh, simply as an end of life care tool. This is uh, about decision making that affects all of us and it's about uh, uh, urgent emergency treatment decisions that we all might need to, uh, uh, that we all need to take uh, because we all might face those situations at some point in our life. Um, so this is about giving people choice and control uh, and involving people. Um, in decisions about their care. Uh, what's really important is that respect needs to start with a conversation. This is about shared decision making, it's about personalised care and support. Uh, it's about uh, bringing people into the heart of decision making, making sure there's a record of what their wishes and what their values are, what their life context is, uh, so that if they're not in a position to make decisions themselves because it's an emergency situation, uh, then those who have to make that decision know something about the person uh, that they're treating um, and what's important to them. Yeah, I think there are a couple of things going forward. Um, it'd be great to see uh, a community of practice developing. You can already see people sharing ideas, sharing experiences in relation to that and I think uh, the more of that the better. Uh, the other thing is that we really need to think um, really carefully uh, about how we uh, involve members of the public in relation to this and so those areas, those localities where they are um, and de 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 developing respect and implementing it really need to be thinking uh, about how they involve their local community in this as well um, and that's something that needs to happen nationally too. Yeah, so it's about making sure that we've got some good consistent messages and that people understand what respect is and what it's designed to achieve. It's about bringing commissioners and clinicians uh, uh, along with us and showing them that this actually brings real benefits to people, that it's the right thing to do um, uh, 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 in terms of improving people's experience of care. But absolutely it's essential that we have a really informed, uh, open, public uh, discussion uh, about what respect is and what it's designed to achieve so that people um, are prepared uh, to have those discussions themselves um, with clinical teams, uh, but also actually that people are asking for this uh, to be enrolled um, and to be available for them in their area.